to, P to our PYP exhibition 2022. Dear PYP students of grade five, it's finally here. The time to showcase your learnings of your PYP journey in terms of your skills and knowledge. Students, through the simple yet powerful messages you've conveyed through your actions, you have demonstrated that you are the agents of change. I'd like to thank you students and teachers for adapting to the multiple formats of learning all through this year, and for having put in all your efforts to ensure that this exhibition journey was a fruitful one. Thank you so much. Without much ado, I request Meera Gangwani to take over. Systems are all around us. Well, don't believe me, just look at yourself in the mirror and right there you have a couple thousand active, alive and kicking systems staring right back at you. Look around the world and you will see one mammoth labyrinth fueled by the interconnectedness of several systems. Want to hear something about systems that is out of this world? Okay, okay, first answer this. How do you organize a space party? Any guesses? It's simple. You plan it. See what I did there? Jokes apart, the importance of systems in our lives and how we organize ourselves can never be undermined. So come join our wonderful grade five on this journey as they highlight their work on the different human-made systems that are an integral part of our daily lives through a specially organized Baal Sabha. Mitrano Tumma Sang Te PYP X Shimati Enquiry Sa Abhyat Asto Jane Hote Hi Pragati Ji Ji Raji ATL Lono Profile Transdisciplinary Eye Elements Good morning to all the esteemed members present in this Bal Sabha. I'm Ishan Mukim, the representative from the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development. We are here to share with you a report on the two different drainage systems, challenges they are facing, and our recommendations and solutions for it. First, I would like to draw your attention towards the two major issues that we will be explaining in detail. First, the challenges faced by the people in Kaladhun, Falgarzilla, and the increasing concerns terms of the Mumbai drainage system. We would like to first discuss the major concerns observed in, in Palgar district. To start with, an interaction with the local contractor, Mr. Sanjay Bhoy, who handles the major water piping system there, helped us to gather information about the geography of this region. The landform here is elevated and consists of hard rocks, which does not allow much absorption of water and restricts groundwater accumulation. 
He further highlighted the concerns faced by the people here. There is a small pond situated a few kilometers away that is used by the locals to fulfill their daily water needs. The water accumulated there is not enough for all. There are no direct water pipes or drainage outlets in the houses. Since there is no system in place, most of the used water drains out without being monitored. Good morning to all present here. I am Ayush Rao and I would like to take this discussion further by highlighting our research that included understanding drainage structures and its types. To begin with, drainage systems are in place to remove excess water in development. This could be flood water, rainwater, and different kinds of runoff. What is it that what is it that helps these, these systems to function? It is the waters of the natural drainage formed by rivers and its distributary is flowing through various topographical areas. To get a better understanding, we identify the types of drainage systems used around the world. These are surface drainage systems, subsurface drainage systems, slope drainage systems, and downspout and gutter systems. After analyzing all the challenges and requirements in depth, we would like to share a prototype of a drainage model we recommend the village to construct. We use the best suit to drainage system as per the landscape, materials available, the functions and usage in the area. On the elevated surface, we would like to install two big tanks interconnected with each other. Further, these tanks will be connected to the main water body. As the village receives heavy rainfall during monsoons, we are expecting the rainwater to be harvested in these two tanks. The third, tanks the third tank acts as a reservoir with an inbuilt motor system. This tank, this tank will be situated down the slope and the running rainwater will be collected in the central channel of open canals constructed alongside the roads. The motor will aid in pumping the water into the two tanks through a main pipe. To further explain the connectivity of the drainage system, we intend to use connecting pipes which will have the main source from tank 2. These pipes will be segregated and connected to houses for continuous water supply. Each house will have an outlet piping system which will carry the wastewater and dispose it into the valley. The next issue that we would like to raise is with regards to the challenges faced by Mumbai City. Our research project highlights the concerns related to the drainage system in Mumbai and further proposes our plan of action. First, we would like to share some important structural facts and some alarming statistics. Mumbai has a drainage system, which in many places are more than 100 years old, consisting 2,000 kilometers of open drains, 440 kilometers of closed drains, 186 outfalls, and more than 30,000 water entrances. The capacity of the drains is around 25 mm of rain per hour during the low tide, which is exceeded routinely during the monsoon season in Mumbai, which witnesses more than 1,400 mm during June and July, stated by Times of India report. Lack of pumps slows down the drainage system. Most of the storm water drains are also choked during by citizens. Illegal constructions and dumping of debris into the system cause flogging. To, ide to identify an appropriate solution, we looked at a drainage system at a global level. This aided us as in following some of these good practices in our recommendations. We analyzed the Japanese drainage system. It is located, located on the outskirts of Tokyo City and it's the world's largest underground flood water diversion facility. This underground tunnel drainage system is designed to deflow the city during rain and typhoons. Drawing comparisons, we arrived at a conclusion that like Mumbai, Japan has a small land area and city area cities are densely populated, making it difficult to build large water discharge channels. 
on the surface japan has solved this through the flood control technology members of the sabha we recommend that by the following the system in flood prone regions mumbai can be safe from a host of problems the major issue that stood out through all our findings and analysis was the lack of knowledge among citizens about waste segregation and maintenance of the drains as for a final action we urge the students of dbis to conduct awareness drives in their school and locality about the importance of waste segregation highlighting how poor waste segregation has led to the damage of our city drains sharing with all a small video on the importance of waste segregation and its impact over our drains conducted by our students Well, could you? One works for a living, but what if living and working is a risk to life? Well, could you imagine yourself down a dark, stinky drain, clogged, suffocating, toxic, unbearable, and without any protective gear? Today, I have with me Arav, who is going to visually experience this dreadful scenario. Arav, gently close your eyes and imagine yourself down a dark. Stinky gutter. How does it feel there? Wow, it's so dark and stinky. I'm already scared. Will I come out alive? It's all clogged and sticky, uh, and I'm surrounded by human and plastic waste and leftover food. Is that paneer? Eeks! What am I even imagining? Arya. Hold still and tell me what you can smell inside the drain. I smell chemicals and the pungent odor of feces and urine. Oh, it's just terrible. Ara, tell me what you can see around you. I see waste in different forms, both dry and wet. Wait, all this waste is clogging up a net and it's not letting the water flow. Ara, think what will happen if it starts raining heavily. Thank you for helping our viewers experience this journey, at least virtually. One. Moving forward, we would like to share some alarming statistics about the damage floods have caused in Mumbai over time. Uh, to quote Paul Coelho, "You are a citizen, and citizenship carries responsibilities." One of these, one of the major reasons for these floods is lack of waste segregation. People in the city irresponsibly discard their waste. We hence propose that multiple awareness drives like such should be implemented across the city. Members, we hope that these examples can be taken up or considered for constructing and maintaining effective drainage systems around the country. so that we can utilize our water sources optimally and fight the bigger issue of water conservation lastly we would like to leave the sabha with a message from one of the superheroes we discovered through this journey someone who is never really spoken of but plays a key role in our lives just by performing a job that none of us would willingly do i would like to recite a few lines from his point of view a cry of every man who is scavenger the dirt garbage and rancid smelling water invade my senses as i wade through the glob of mud the odor of human waste and urine threatens to gag me insects crawling on the rough wet walls of the sewer a ray of sunlight peeking through does not give me any hope Looking at my screen, you can see the dreadful st state in which these scavengers dive into the drains and maintain them for us. This can be resolved by one simple pledge that we can all take together: segregate waste and use our available resources mindfully. To understand what kind of waste is generated by us on a daily basis, and ways in which we can segregate our waste mindfully, we would like to hand it over to the waste management team, Clean Dream Team. Thank you.
a very good morning to all the esteemed members of this Bal Sabha. We are the Clean Dream Team, members of the Waste Management System. With such important points raised by my fellow members, I'd like to bring to your notice another system that is so essential to managing our lives with efficiency. We would like to present our proposal that seeks to provide for a better understanding of the waste we generate, how the waste is managed, and the matters connected therewith. A group of garbageologists research this matter of waste using local and global case studies. They found that they are not one of Asia's largest dumping grounds and probably the oldest too was established in 1927 across 132 hectares and receives around 3,000 metric tons of waste every day. An open landfill doesn't continue beyond four decades, which is the norm across the globe. Obviously, it hasn't happened on this case. For 90 years, we have been dumping unsegregated garbage here in a half hazard manner. Plastic, metal, construction waste, e-waste, you name it, it's all there. Six lakh people live around it. They are not dumping ground, and that's a perpetual risk to their health. The people who have to live here suffer throughout the year. The incidence of interstitial lung disease in the elderly age group is very high in Chamber and Ghatkopar areas. The world's first study to look for the presence of plastics in human blood detected particles in 77% of those tested. PET most commonly used to produce string bottles, food packaging, and clothes. Polystyrene plastic, a wide variety of household products, and polyethylene, a material regularly used in the production of plastic carrier packs, were found in the human bloodstream. The three different types of plastic in a single blood sample were measured. PET was found in the bloodstream of 50% of those tested, while polystyrene was present in 36%. Landfills are the most popular destination for solid waste. Some cities like San Francisco and Seattle are able to recycle more than its central landfills, but the majority of the U.S. sends their trash to the dump. Scientists have revealed that developing countries dump a quarter of their e-waste into seven developing countries, including China, India, and five West African countries, Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Benin, and Liberia. Even though the Bao case studies revealed a desperate situation that we all are in, we also came across some case studies where waste itself has been used to either create awareness or reuse long with studies about sustainable lifestyle choices. Subhash Rane, a retired professionals from Simons, India, took up to changing the pace of his lo locality after he noticed garbage on the streets during his morning walk. He requested the local authorities to collect the garbage. Over subsequent months, he exercised the same while coordinating with the ward officials to ensure the waste pickups in his ward. He noticed the lack of coordination of citizens with the ward officers to manage effective pickup. Soon, he became the order of man for the community in regards to waste pickups. Over time, he strategically killed the rubbing spots with the help of shop owners, residents, and other proactive citizens, and has bridged the gap between the municipal corporation and the citizens. He is now trying to make it a zero waste ward by requesting separate trucks for collecting wet and dry waste. The microbiology department at Sate College has been managing its biodegradable waste for seven years. Professor Kudwa gathered information and set up a vermi composting system for the leaf litter in the college. The compost was designed with scrap material. The cover of the vermi composting pit is old windows. They even got worms from a local nursery. Now, all the waste from the canteen is being thrown in the compost pit and mixed with soil. The campus horticulture waste and the vegetable peels from their canteen kick-started the process. The compost generated from the pit is consumed on, the, on campus as many of all its green cover. The campus also generates a lot of paper from the answer sheets and has been stored for three years as per university norms. That's when a student, Lakshmikan Deshpande, approach them with his new venture, RecycleKaro.com. 
it picks up all the e-waste and, pa and paper. Cordridge campus spreads across both the eastern and western parts of Vikroli. Since 2010, the company has been focusing on sustainable initiatives under the protection of their good and green policy. Of the entire 12 metric tons produced, six metric tons is that of industrial waste. Packaging waste and other scrap were not handled and are now being streamlined. Every division is provided with a shed with separate compartments for scrap, corrugated boxes, packaging material, and biodegradable waste. The Environment Engineering Office looks into managing all of this from these divisions, ensuring appropriate vendors are contacted for pickups of these specific wastes. The entire industrial arm manages to recycle about 98% of its waste. The industrial complex has extended its management of waste to the residential colony that houses its employees in 4,500 apartments. In addition, about 45 waste pickers from DNR dumping ground have been employed to manage the waste of the residential colonies. All these 45 women are a part of a self-help group that ensures that they get their minimum wages and other employment benefits. Being inspired by villages for the last 20 years and based on the foundational principle of spirituality, Mr. Rahul V. Deshpande constructed his home in an urban area, blending the modern with the traditional. From small, big, big small ideas of change, let's now take a look at some global actions. Five tons of plastic waste that was pulled out of the Pacific Ocean was transformed into a four-story whale with the 2018 richest terrarium. A stark reminder of the 115 million tons of plastic waste still swimming in our waters. Located in a lush national park, the Coconut School is built almost entirely from recycled waste and is the brainchild of our Oak Funday, nicknamed the Rubbish Man, a former hotel manager who dreams of a trash free Cambodia. In 2003, Kami Council became the first municipality in Japan to issue a zero waste declaration, which means that all waste produced by its residents is recycled or reused rather than being sent to landfills or for incineration. It sounds incredible, but Sweden has run out of trash and is actually asking other countries for their garbage so it can keep its recycling plants running. Less than 1% of Sweden's household waste goes into the landfill dump. The rest is recycled in many different ways. The 32 waste management plants in Sweden today produce heat for 810,000 Swedish households and electricity for about 250,000 private houses. Thank you for presenting the findings to us in such a precise and effective manner. I understand that you might have mixed feelings about the information that you heard. Going through these case studies was a reality check that we all needed. I now request Rhea to present our analysis to everyone. A large amount of waste is generated in just our country every day. It is estimated that on the average, 0 0.1 million tons of municipal solid waste is generated every day. That is 36.5 million tons annually. Understanding the waste first and then the existing system that processes this waste is an important step in developing an efficient management system around it. Based on the case studies that we have come across globally and locally, we found that awareness matters a lot, while government and industrial organizations play an important role in the proper management of waste, individual initiatives can make a difference. While some individuals, communities, and countries are able to do this, there are others who might find this difficult. After knowing the fact and a problem in its true form, we as a committee felt the need to think on our feet. So we brainstormed, conducted more research, and met people who are subject matter experts in waste management. 
like Asha Jinnarhan, founder of Good Earth Ambassadors. In order to bring forth certain solutions, it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to come up with a solution. But without working towards the solution, nature pays dearly for our mistakes. We would now like to present our proposed solutions to all the members of this Bal Sabha. Simple actions like the following can give us a good start towards managing our waste. Waste segregation. Basic dry and wet waste segregation might seem like a small action, but if we segregate one kg of waste in our home, it will be easier for the pickup teams to send the segregated waste, which helps them to manage tons of waste in a better manner. Avoid the use of single-use plastics as much as possible. Awareness rides and campaigns. We have a society call where you can discuss the matter with each person. Focus on the six R's. Recycle, reduce, rethink, refuse, replace, and repair. Minimize your purchase. If you buy too much, more waste will be generated. Hence, buy only as much as you need. Make compost so that if so that it can enrich our soil and it indeed is a good way to recycle our wet waste. We believe that in order to start working towards making our dreams a reality, we had to start with something no matter how basic. So we acted upon our need to understand and have a better waste management system. Presenting to you a few images and videos of the actions that we have taken. My name is Rihanna Fulzani and I'm making a compost today. First step that we put the mud, a layer of mud in it. Second step, we put wet waste. Wet waste is basically like all the peels from bananas and other vegetables. And then we put dry waste. Dry waste are basically leaves or all the plants and stuff. And now we mix it in a little bit. And now we put even more soil. Small steps are needed for bigger one. So we took up the innovate innovation and spreading awareness. We went to we went to Jawahar Jala Parashat School and told the students about segregating wet and dry waste. Suka katra. Suka katra manje uh, kagar, plastic, batlia, kapde, ityadi. Ha katra apan nilia dabya takko. We as the creators of waste are responsible for the management of the same. The least we need to do is use the waste we generate to make our lives better. Never ending needless purchases often leave us with loads of trash behind. That way, energy and material recovery will be taken very seriously. With that motto, reducers will be forced to acknowledge the materials they use 
in their products and the packaging of their products. Awareness is important for change. People must come together to work towards solving the issue that will bring solutions to their doorsteps. And so in collaboration with the Drainage Works team, we request you to upload images or videos as you display action or spread an awareness about the importance of saving our planet on the Padlet link provided in the chat. As Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. With this inspiration in mind, we would like to hand over the baton to Guardian's Energy. One day, the esteemed panel of the Ministry of Power is sitting in their homes. Suddenly, Mummy, light ni suit are you? Light chalu karna, bot garmi hai. Light ka Wi Fi gaya kya? Are baba, koi light wali lekara? Are call kese karu kya? Phone ki battery dead ho gayi hai. Easy chalado ke please. Our Bal Sabha panel was not able to sit without electricity for a minute. Imagine there are villages in the country that have yet to receive a regular supply of energy. A very good morning to all the members of this Bal Sabha. I am Vyom Bhavna from the Energy Group. My colleagues and I will be presenting to you the annual energy progress report. We have carefully investigated the current energy situation in the world. Our report will highlight some important concerns and make suggestions to mitigate the situation. Any conversation about energy needs to begin with energy poverty. Energy poverty is the lack of access to sustainable modern energy services and products. Human existence is highly dependent on energy sources. Not having adequate access to affordable and clean energy has effects on multiple areas such as agriculture, finance, education, transportation, health, and well being, to name a few. We identified SG7, which aims to create a new energy system which is efficient, accessible, affordable, sustainable, and secure. Thank you, Vio. Good morning, members and friends of the Bal Sabha. Let me begin by talking about energy sources. There are two types of sources, renewable or non-renewable. Renewable energy is also called clean energy or green power. Renewable energy is made from resources that nature will replace, like wind, water, and sunshine. Non-renewable energy comes from sources that will run out or will not be replenished in our, li or in our lifetime or even in many, many lifetimes. Most non-renewable energy sources are fossil fuels, coal, petroleum, and natural gas. Have you ever wondered how much energy have we consumed till now? Why do we have power cuts? Why do we pay such high elect electricity bills? Why is everyone talking about saving electricity? Let's take a look at the sources of energy in the last 20 odd years.
This makes us realize how en how our energy consumption has increased leaps and bounds and hampered our living. Good morning, dear friends. As we know, energy consumption differs in the city and rural areas. To understand the energy situation in rural areas, we visited the village of Palgar in Maharashtra. We discovered that the demand for energy has increased over the years due to increase in population. However, the energy demands are not being met. There are power cuts every Friday from 8 to 6 p.m. During monsoons, there are times where there is pa power failure for two days at a stretch, leading to losses in the agriculture, financial, and educational sectors. Further, it also hampers the daily life and well-being of the citizens. Good morning, my fellow committee members. We wish energy efficiency was as simple as changing consumer behaviors. The main factors that affect energy efficiency are affected by global scenarios as seen in Ukraine and Sri Lanka. Both economies were crushed due to war and pandemic respectively. This adversely affected the energy consumption in the countries. The war between Russia and Ukraine has hit the supply of Russian gas across Europe. The deficit directly increased the demand of coal and crude oil-based fuels, shooting up their prices across the globe. In Sri Lanka, the tourism-based economy was hit due to two years pandemic that brought a complete halt to the international travel and tourism industry. The lack of financial resources affected the production of resources leading to fuel shortages and massive power cuts across the country. We captured our thoughts about these issues using visible thinking routines. We identified the challenges, empathized with the affected people, and made connections with the situation in India. Let's not be dejected listening to my dear friend. There is still hope. While on one hand, things seem to be falling apart. On the other, there's companies such as Shell bringing efficient energy to remote places. In early 2018, Shell began a project with residents of Sithi Lanka in the Philippines. Shell contributed by providing solar kiosks, which enabled building of solar-powered wells and paved the way to clean water, which has been the main impact of the Shell project. Fewer children are having to stay away from school due to illness. Access to improved source of water resulted in better health and therefore better school attendance. Increased family income and better lifestyle choices. Friends, let me build on this and tell you about another case in the country of Myanmar. With a population of about 53 million, it is one of the least developed countries in the world. People have not experienced living with electricity for years. People still have to cook on open fires using charcoal and firewood, and the villagers spend a large proportion of their income on candles to light up their house. The Shell project helped install solar power, which invariably resolved these problems. Hello, my dear friends in Balsaba. I am Spanu, which we needed expert advice for which we invited Ms. Amrita Sun for a guest session lecture. She is a researcher in, at the Duke University and specializes in energy consumption. These are the key takeaways from the session. Energy infrastructure. Energy needs proper infrastructure and development to work. Green building is an example of this as the building uses renewable power and is extremely power efficient. It also has a lot of plants on it. Carbon footprint. A carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse gases the, that are generated by our action. Globally, the average carbon footprint is closer to four tons and is threatening to harm the planet. The figure has to be 
brought down to zero offsetting the a carbon offset is a way to compensate for your emissions our everyday actions at home and work consume energy and produce carbon emissions these consumptions can be offset by funding renewable energy corporations and planting trees good morning friends i am vidhan looking at this energy solution we felt the need to conduct a survey to learn about people behavior and practices to save energy let me share with you the report the study showed that people are aware about the energy solution and the need for saving electricity people are also willing to install and use solar panels wherever possible which will truly bring positive change and help the environment we came to a conclusion that what people need is a plan of action to save energy after though our team came up with simple actions that people can take to reduce their carbon footprint we created a awareness campaign for the same my friend viom will tell you more about it thank you vidha this brings us back to the point where we started in order to tackle the global energy problem we need efficient energy system Our team took immediate action and came up with a prototype of a system that can be used to educate and mobilize the new generation towards conservation of energy. We introduced to you Guardians of Energy. This is a program that works on building awareness, reflecting on our personal energy consumption, and making behavioral changes to conserve energy. This program highlights the three E's: educate the new generation about energy. And empower them with simple solutions to conserve energy. Energize the next generation with clean energy. Let us watch a demonstration of our.
This brings our report to a close. As you can see, energy conservation affects many areas of our life, including health and well-being. We hope that our presentation will motivate everyone to adopt new energy conservation behaviors. With this, we hand over to the healthcare group. Distinguished members of the Bal Sabha, coming out of a pandemic that wreaked havoc in our lives and systems alike, it has dawned on all of humanity that the age-old adage, "Health is wealth," is and will always continue to stand true. आज मैं सिद्दीक और गांवकर इस संगठन की मुख्य व्याख्या अपने सहपाठियों के साथ आपने सामने एक रिपोर्ट एवं प्रस्ताव प्रस्तुत करने आए हैं इस प्रस्ताव के द्वारा हम यह उम्मीद करते हैं कि हम भारत की स्वास्थ्य सेवा उनका काम और प्रत्येक सेवा के बीच के इंटरकनेक्टेडनेस से बेहतर रूबरू हो सके हमारा प्रस्ताव दो भागों में बटा है इसकी शुरुआत होती है हमारे अनुसंधान आसान आसान शब्दों में रिपोर्ट से हमारे रिपोर्ट में काफी चीजों को महत्व दिया गया है और अब हम उन चीजों की प्रस्तुति सबके सामने करेंगे एट द हेल्प ऑफ एनी स्टडी ऑफ अ सिस्टम लाइज द क्लोज लुकिंग इनटू इट्स स्ट्रक्चर एडिशनली देयर आर थ्री लेवल्स इन द हेल्थ केयर सिस्टम प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी एंड टर्शरी दिस इंफॉर्मेशन लेड अस टुवर्ड्स मोर क्वेश्चंस especially about the rural infrastructure of the healthcare system soon those were resolved on our visit to the government hospital in jawahar yeah. there are six facilities in the healthcare system six main facilities in the healthcare system medical laboratories hospitals service centers nursing homes surgical centers polyclinics and doctor consultation clinics आम्ही एक गट म्हणून डीबीएस ने दत्त घेतलेला जिल्हा परिषद शाळेच्या अगदी जवळ असलेल्या पालघर मधील सरकारी रुग्णालयाला भेट दिली येथे आम्ही तयार केलेल्या प्रश्नांच्या सेटवर आधारित आम्ही डॉक्टरांशी बोललो आम्हाला रुग्णालय विषय जाणून घेण्यात रस होता कारण आम्हाला अर्बन भागाबद्दल काही गोष्ट माहीत होत्या परंतु रुरल भागातील काम काजाबद्दल अधिक जाणून घ्यायची उत्सुकता होती आमचे अनालिसिस आणि कन्क्लुजन जवाहर भेटीतून आम्हाला सरकारी रुग्णालयाविषय अधिक माहिती मिळाली आम्हाला कळले की त्यांच्याकडे शंभर बेडची सुविधा आहे कोविडच्या काळात चाळीस बेड असलेल्या रुग्णांच्या भारत व्यवस्थापित करण्यासाठी त्यांच्याकडे स्वतंत्र इमारत होती स्त्री रोगतज्ञ हृदय रोगतज्ञ असे वैज्ञानिक अपुऱ्या प्रमाणात आणि सामान्य काळजी घेणारे डॉक्टर होते सुमारे सहा रुग्णवाहिका असलेल्या पालघर मधील ते एकमेव रुग्णालय होते कन्क्लूड करायला त्यांच्याकडे जवळ जवळ प्रत्येक गोष्टीची कमतरता होती addition to understanding the plight of doctors through videos and news we studied the situations of nurses closely too one was a case study challenging of challenges of nursing workforce and the other source of our information was an interview currently with a nurse employed in new zealand miss malson loops to do her interview We realize that the situation is equally bad for all healthcare workers alike. 
especially during the challenging and unprecedented COVID times. Staff shortage was another major problem brought on by the situation, adding to the woes of the already overburdened healthcare system. The healthcare industry is facing many changes that pose new challenges to medical organizations, big and small. In particular, the fast evolving government regulations, COVID-19 pandemic recovery, technological innovations, and, and, and patient expectations create a new environment in which running a medical practice isn't just about treating patients anymore. This clearly brings us to understand that the healthcare system of any country faces certain common problems. Additionally, it is important to note that the pandemic has opened up many gaps in the system. A robust healthcare system is a reflection of how developed a country is, and hence every hurdle in the sector needs to be addressed efficiently. Having said this, we were drawn back to square one, a statement of inquiry. Does regulating resources and facilities lead us to an efficient healthcare system? For this, it was important to study some, if any, success stories. With a barrage of problems, it would only take a miracle to find us these stories of efficiency. For us, these came in the form of Nigerian model for Ebola eradication and the most recent Mumbai model for COVID mitigation. Here is what struck us from both cases. It is these cases that teach us that being proactive rather than reactive is the key to averting as well as facing any major crisis. As it is rightly put across by Ken Poirot, be proactive, not reactive for an apparently insignificant issue ignored by today can spawn tomorrow's catastrophe. Lee Hunt has rightly put it, the groundwork for all happiness is good health and good health begins with taking this responsibility on ourselves. Working with the loaner profile attribute balance in mind, we found different ways in which it is possible to not only take care of ourselves, but also those around us. Respect is one of the greatest expressions of appreciation. Here is a small video with a poem that is... One of the greatest expressions of appreciation. Here's a small video with the poem that we have written as a mark of our respect to the valiant COVID warriors. Salam karte hai hum un jabazob ka. Din raat kiya parishram. Chukne nahi diya te range ka parcham. Sar kate par ruke nahi hamare kadam. Polio coronavirus Ebola leprosy. The world went through. For the battle emerged victorious. Sacrifices the warriors made cared about the loved ones missed the stay. Work their fingers to the bone, carry the weight all alone. Salute, saludo, salam. A monster still lurks in the darkness. The minute our guards are down, the monster will pounce. We must be reflective and principled to make the world virus free. This responsibility starts with you, you and only you. Make the move and be the helping hand. Together we must stand. We can fight the battle with your help and might. The world can change tonight. If you help the helping hand. Scan this QR code or use the link provided in the chat to take your pledge to hashtag be balanced today. Taking the cue from the theme of World Health Day, celebrated annually on April 7th, Our Planet, Our Health, our recommendation is divided into two parts. Apne kai baar suna hoga ek sham, so and so ke naam, hai na? Hum. कहते हैं केवल एक शाम क्यों एक दिन हमारे इन साहसियों के नाम 
we thereby advocate that a day be dedicated to value the tireless and relentless efforts of all COVID warriors. A day not to be spent in the confines of our homes, sleeping, scrolling through social media or Netflixing. A day where we choose our health, mental, physical and spiritual. सभी छोटी बड़ी संस्थाएं कार्यस्थल और अन्य जगहों पर कोई भी इसी क्रिया अपनाए जिससे उनके स्वास्थ्य में अच्छी उपलब्धि हो सकारात्मक ऊर्जा का निर्माण हो और वो अपना एवं दूसरों का पूर्ण पूर्ण ध्यान रख पाए इंस्पायर बाईन It's crucial to bear in mind that your health is an investment in what makes sense. Pay tribute to our valiant COVID warriors. Dear Bal Sabha, we the healthcare group have prepared a small performance. We hope to inspire you by this graceful act and hope that you find it in you to take a step towards creating a healthy balance in the society by following the COVID protocols and taking care of ourselves. <laughs> मामा कितने दिन हो गए आज आप घर आओगे ना हाँ बेटा बेटा रोज न्यूज में डॉक्टरों के बारे में देखकर अब डर लगता है तुम ठीक तो हो ना हाँ मा नन्ही सी हसी भोली सी खुशी फूलों सी वो बाहें भूल गए जब देश ने दी आवाज हमें हम घर की राहें भूल गए हमें नींद उसी दिन आएगी जब देखेंगे आबाद तुझे इस कोरोना की डर से लोग सिर्फ एक टच से घबराते हैं हम डॉक्टर्स हैं रोज मौत से हाथ मिलाकर आते हैं तेरी मिट्टी में मिल जावा गुल बन के मैं खिल जावा इतनी सी है दिल की यार तेरी नदियों में बह जावा तेरे खेतों में लहरावा इतनी सी है दिल की यार अस्पताल में लोग इस बीमारी से अकेले लड़ते वक्त अपने परिवार का साथ चाहते हैं पर ऐसे हालातों में हम ही हैं उनके डॉक्टर हम ही उनका परिवार हम ही उनकी हिम्मत और हम, हम ही उनकी उम्मीद तो खुद की खोज में निकल तो किस लिए आदर्श है तो चल तेरे वजूद की समय को भी तलाश है समय को भी तलाश है जो तुझसे लिपटी बेड़ियां समझना इनको वस्त्र तू जो तुझसे लिपटी बेड़िया समझ न इनको वस्त्र तू ये बेड़िया पिघाल के बना ले इनको शस्त्र तू बना ले इनको शस्त्र तू तो खुद की खोज में निकल तो किस लिए हताश है तो चल तेरे वजूद की समय को भी तलाश है समय को भी तलाश है कोविड के खिलाफ अपनी ये लड़ाई अभी भी जारी है मास्क लगाएं, अपने आप को सैनिटाइज करते रहें और दो गज की दूरी बनाए रखें अपना ध्यान रखें लाइफ के द्वारा लिया गया हमारे प्रपोजल का दूसरा भाग हमें अगले ग्रुप एग्री एजेंट्स के प्रस्ताव की ओर ले जाता है अच्छे स्वास्थ्य का सबसे पहला और महत्वपूर्ण तालुक पौष्टिक खान पान से ही होता है और सिर्फ हमारे किसान भाई बंधु के कठिन प्रयास से ही हो सकता है बायोडाइवर्सिटी इज इन डेंजर एंड कैन ओनली थ्राइव थ्रू सस्टेन एफर्ट्स टूवर्ड्स हेल्दी प्लान फॉर ऑल हेल्दी क्लाइमेट हेल्दी सॉइल हेल्दी फूड 
will all lead to health aplenty for one for all handing over the states to our able friends the agri agents bharat krishi pradhan desh ho shetkari raja hota raja zala rang ata ho सर्वानी दक्ष हो जी जी राजी गुड आफ्टरनून रिस्पेक्टेड सभा मेंबर्स Before we begin, we would like to thank the healthcare group for throwing light on the current scenario of the health system in our country. Healthcare and agriculture interlinked and we realized this as we got to an understanding of SDG 12 which focuses on responsible consumption and production. This is also one of the key agricultural concerns. Did you know India is a self-sufficient country, which means we grow seventy billion tons of food in comparison to the two thirty billion required for consumption, and we still have over one ninety four million Indians who go hungry every day, which means roughly forty percent of the food is wasted before it reaches the consumer. India an agrarian economic country 60% of our population is currently engaged in farming which accounts for roughly 18% of India's GDP putting India as the second largest global producer of food amounting to almost 2.1 trillion dollars in terms of trade annually as responsible members of our progressing nation we visited the village of Kalidhor in Jawahar to discuss the problems faced by the farmers we interviewed ms kavita borse for the same members of the sabha we put forth the problems as discussed with her dependency on rain and other environmental factors the village of kalihon is a drought and prone region where farming is effectively done for only four months during the monsoon They choose to grow crops like cashew and millet because they use less water. In the Tamil village, despite having four water bodies, almost three were dried up and one was in use, thus making year-round farming their biggest challenge. Farmers are not landowners. Most of the farmers are not landowners because most of them are still under the zamindari system, where they till the land for people who own the land and are paid daily wages. Miss Kavita till the land from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day and earned a measly wage of 150 rupees a day. This is almost half of the average rate of 328 provided by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers of Welfare of India for the state of Maharashtra. She has seven members in the family who all did small jobs and earned a collective income of seven thousand rupees a month. Probably the cost of one meal for a family of five in Mumbai at a restaurant. As per an article in Economic Times, eighty-five percent farmers operate on less than five acres of land, contributing only fifty-one percent of the total agricultural output. For them to escape the cycle of poverty, they must do odd jobs for additional income, since their survival is at stake. Traditional farming families moving away from farming. In our conversation with Miss Kavita Borse, we realized that the cost of a ten kg bag of seeds was roughly nine hundred to thousand rupees. That added with fertilizers, rearing the cattle, and other costs, ran into thousands for one round of farming. The farmer was at mercy of nature because there was no guarantee that the seeds would sprout and yield a good crop. Hence, to safeguard the future of their family, they choose to do other jobs where they can earn a steady income. Imagine after after six to eight months of hard work trying to grow your paddy and wheat, they earn a meager nine hundred rupees per quintal. Which is nine rupees per kg. Not to forget that this is their only farming income for the whole year. What will happen to this income if this crop fails? No income, no food. Then how does one survive? 
Additionally, the Mondays, established by the government, guarantee a minimum support price. But many such Mondays do not still exist in farming regions. Money lending due to necessity and often the inability to pay back loans have pushed farmers further into poverty and debt. We will cover the MSP under the farming bill later. Middleman and distribution chain is long. In our interview, we realized that cashew was the most profitable crop grown in the Jawar region. When asked about the price, they sold the crop, the crop at a meagre 200 rupees per kilo. Imagine the price we pay at city level, almost 900 to 1,200 rupees a kilo. Even if the cashew had to be cleaned and repacked, just think about the number of min middlemen involved in this process, which raises the price by five times the original. Quality and texture of soil. Ms. Kavita Shah decides that the soil quality is degraded and sandy and not fit to grow any vegetables. They only grow millet and rice and they do this is their food for survival. Ms. Kavita informed us that most of their vegetables came last season and they too had to go buy them as they can grow their own. Difficult to secure loans. Farmers require micro loans, which means small loans, to get seeds and fertilizers to plow their fields. But imagine, crop failure year after year leads to no profits. Its survival becomes difficult. These loans are feasible only for farmers who own the land. Hence, despite the government running micro loan schemes, this option can be burdensome. So, what are effective solutions to solving these problems? Our conversation with the farmers in Jawahar made us realize understanding new age farming techniques like vertical farming will aid the farmers in being self-sustainable as the land is sandy and not fit for vegetable growth. New age methods will encourage them to get back to farming unlike moving to cities in hope for greener pastures. Also, if farmers could avail of microloans so farmers do not have to depend on landlords to get money and farm as contract laborers. This is possible with government support as they can run these programs to create awareness among farmers and also provide subsidies to farmlands where growth is poor due to shortage of water or infertile soil. Once farmers get back to farm, this will encourage setting up of more farming related jobs like setting up water tanks, irrigation tanks and more, helping their family members who are not employed to get a part-time well-paying job to support their families. Currently, despite the fact that the government has set up APMC, Agricultural Produce Market Committee, also known as Mondays, the chain from the farmer to the second last point of the sale is very long and has too many brokers and wholesalers. Minimizing this chain will help the farmers earn slightly more, maintaining the retail price for the buyers. Despite the fact that India has amped, number, amped the number of cold storage chains, it, it, it is imperative to build smoother roads and provide better connectivity through highways to ensure fresh, fresh produce reaches Mondays in timely manner. Maximum farmers suffer because of Ill illiteracy and inability to read paperwork. By giving free education and in English medium schools, it will aid the families to carry on the farming business in the future. People with farming occupation at village level should be given access to subsidized healthcare to help the green gods take care of their health so that we can get a steady supply of grains year round. Government support. Government intervention is imperative. The government should look at empowering farming families by providing free education for two children of a farmer to aid them in their farming paperwork. In a patriarchal society, making more small or micro loans available to women who want to farm their own land. Access to clean sanitation and healthcare facilities for farmers so that they need not take loans for this which further burdens their personal economic cycle. We identified the following initiatives taken by the government of India. Using smart trucks and a temperature controlled environment, 
and building cold storage chains to prevent the post harvest loss of $440 billion annually. Proposed the three farmer bills, which are as follow. The farmers produce trade and commerce. Allows farmers to sell their produce out at APMC Mondays to whoever offers a higher price. The second one, the farmer's agreement on price assurance and farm services allows farmers to enter into a contract farming agreement with the buyer for procurement of crops at a pre at pre approved prices. The third bill is the essential commodities bill, which de which declassifies items like onions, cereals, pulses, potatoes, edible oil seeds and oils as essential items in normal circumstances. To simplify things, these wills are all in favor of the farmer, but what they dread is the removal of the minimum support price. So what is MSP? The MSP is a minimum price guarantee that acts as a safety net or insurance for farmers when they sell particular crops. These crops are procured uh, procured by government agencies at a promised price to farmers and the MSP cannot be altered in any given situation as it is set by the central government. The, the concept of MSP therefore protects the farmers in the country in situations where crop prices fall drastically. A total of 22 to 23 crops are procured under MSP with wheat and rice being the main ones. Having researched all the above, a comprehensive understanding of agriculture was summarized in the following line, Central Idea. Our action plan. Keeping agriculture at the heart of inquiry, we decided to pledge our support for the Save the Soil campaign organized by Isha Foundation. We chose to become Earth Buddies and created our dance studio to support the cause. We encourage parents and students to pledge support with this cause and send letters, trunks, phones, or write a few words to support this campaign. All the material collected will be shared with ESA Foundation. This is our baby step to encourage the government to create soil policies to prevent its degradation. Now, let's see why you should support soil conservation. 60% of our soil will turn extinct if we do not take up bringing the soil under the shade of trees. Do you know the microbes that feed on animal excreta and dried leaves are dying? Do you know why? Just because we keep cleaning the topsoil and also dig as deep as 12 inches into the ground, which further threatens their survival. Imagine 20 years from now, 9.3 billion people on Earth will have 30% less food, leading to civil strife. As food will be rare and prices will be high, I ask you to restore and help revitalize the soil for our future generations. Take your pledge now and support our campaign. Click on the link in the chat box and go like the page. Le and leave a hashtag, hashtag save us all, hashtag DBI save us all. Thank you. Good morning, members of the Bal Sabha. We are the Ministry of Transport, and we have some remarkable innovations this year that have contributed to the efficient functions of the transport systems. A brilliant one is the very recently introduced Kavach system in the railways. It is an automatic braking mechanism bringing the locomotives to a complete stop 380 meters apart 
preventing rail accidents drastically. It is a made in India technology that is designed to help Indian railways achieve the goal of zero accidents. This technology is implemented on South Central Railway and future plans are to introduce it to the Delhi Mumbai and Delhi Havra corridors. Another system which has contributed to the control of traffic violations leading to smooth functioning of the road systems is the HLR. With this feature, we are able to easily find offenders who violate traffic rules, thereby improving the road discipline. You will find it interesting that in Mumbai, careless bikers are made to watch awareness videos about the dangers of riding without a helmet. How cool is that? Did you know the transport department is not just about roadways or railway system, but it is, but it has a far-reaching impact on various other sectors. Let us take you through some of the areas which have been directly or indirectly benefited with the services of the transport department. In the recent World Impact event of the Russia-Ukraine war, the government recognized the need to utilize this opportunity to increase the export of wheat from India. Due to our efficient and robust system in place, we were able to support the agriculture department in fulfilling the orders. Rural farmers were supported by export of their fruits and vegetables to West Asian countries, Singapore, and Kuala Lumpur during the COVID times. We supported the healthcare industry by creating green lanes and corridors to enable them in organ transportation. Distribution of vaccines in the recent pandemic was a need of the hour, and the Ministry of Transport stepped up the game as we played a crucial role in not only distributing vaccines within our country, but also exported it to countries around the world. We have supported the government in saving precious lives of our citizens. Mission Ganga, where we rescued our people and brought them back safely from the war zone of Ukraine, reinforced our belief in the important contribution we make for our country. The last two years, we have worked tirelessly towards the One Day Bharat mission, bringing back Indians who are stranded abroad due to the lockdown caused by COVID-19. We are proud to share that this turned out to be one of the largest evacuations of civilians by any country around the world. Similarly, we have a direct impact on various other departments like the waste management and energy sectors. Transporting waste or resources to the respective sectors is one of the chief functions of our organization. As you can see, the transport system plays a key role in supporting various systems. It often provides a crucial link between two systems. We are proud of our achievements, but we also recognize that, that there are some areas where we could work to make it more efficient. As part of our project, we recently visited a village in Palghar. We were happy to see the road connectivity of the village, but we were surprised to know that there was no public transport to reach the village. Also, the children of the village had to walk long distances to come to school due to the absence of any mode of transport. A shocking fact was that if people wanted to use the railways, they had to travel 65 plus kilometers to reach the station. This made us realize that we need to plan on building better infrastructure. It is our duty to work on building better infrastructure, not only in cities, but also in villages. Oh. We later took the view of a few citizens of Mumbai and learned that people are suffering due to violation of traffic rules for accidents. This led us to research on the data of road accidents and was surprised by the statistics. We learned that overspeeding was a major cause of road accidents. We didn't know Maharashtra is ranked third in the country in most road accidents and most of that happened due to speeding. We could not ignore this and decided to take some action to create awareness about it among the people. We put to the streets and enacted a street play to spread the message.
सभी को करना है इस पर विचार मन कर Another survey that we conducted in our vicinity, we were astonished to know that a lot of rules were not followed in residential parking lots of high-rise large complexes. We then spoke to children who belonged to buildings which had multi-story parking. They gave us an insight into the problems faced, like crash driving, distracted drivers, etc. Here we conducted a webinar for the members of the society about these concerns and suggested ways to deal with these problems, such as adding convex mirrors at junctions and setting speed limits. We came across an article during our research that Mumbai exceeds the national average in accidents involving kids during school commute. We wondered why. This made us take up Don Bosco International School as a pilot project to find out why it is so. We observed the traffic outside the school and recorded the problems that the school was facing. We later came up with a plan to create awareness among the two major groups involved, parents and students. We did a role play for the children of the school to make them understand what needs to be followed. An informative song was created for the parents to suggest ways to resolve the challenges being faced. We are the PYP X Transport team, organizing the traffic outside schools our team. Carpooling is the key, and if you disagree, look at the cars outside the school. One child for cars, so one fool. If you live nearby, don't take the car. Only use it if you have to go far. Take the school bus to save nature. The impact is pretty major. Double parking is a sin. Parking and walking the rest is a win. Don't stop the car near the turn. Because of the traffic, you're going to disturb. Don't park in the middle of the road or the smooth system will be slow. If you park in a crowded place, getting out of the problem, you will face. Don't park in front of the gate as you will make others wait. Enjoy dropping your kid to school and let's follow the traffic rules. Traffic 
for any system to be successful, collaboration is a key. We concluded that the government and the people need to join hands and work together for the betterment of the system as a whole. The government needs to understand the plight of the citizens and design infrastructure which will help in making their lives easy. On the other hand, people need to follow the rule which will help in smooth functioning of the system. Also, taking care of the infrastructure provided by the government should be our responsibility. I would like to quote Eckhart Tolle, a famous author, awareness is the greatest agent for change. He worked on creating awareness drives among the people in the form of street play, songs and webinars. We appeal to the Bal Sabha to now take this forward to the other Sabhas and continue our initiative of spreading awareness awareness among as only then the change will come thank you you would now like to open the sabha for questions if you would like to ask a question to any of the groups please add it in the q and a please mention the group before the question example energy or waste management so i have one question okay and uh, anybody from any group can take this um you may raise your hand or you might uh, yeah, want to answer. I'd like any of you to let us know which is the one learner profile attribute that you think you majorly developed all through um, the PYPX journey. Oh. Yes, Zidane Vadia? Ma'am, I think we all use our social skills more mostly because we all communicated properly with our friends and created a wonderful presentation. Thanks. Anybody else? Yes, Kushi? Ma'am, uh, I think we used our cooperation skills because we had to cooperate. If we didn't cooperate, fights would start and then the presentation or everything we're practice for will go haywire. Okay, so you mean to say you um, developed your social skills, right? Okay, any other skill anybody would like to talk about that you oh, developed? Yeah, ma'am, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma yeah, ma yeah. yeah. Vyom is Vyom Vyom. Uh, we, we all developed our research skills because we had to research a lot about case studies and we had to interact with other people to research on our topics. Great, very nice. Yes, so that, yes. Which means that made you all more knowledgeable, right? Yes. Ma'am. Yes, Sarah, go ahead. We used our thinking skills. We had to come up with a lot of ideas to make our presentation like be more enjoyable and interactive so also the audience understands everything that we present excellent anybody else can i say it yeah go ahead uh, so uh, we were open-minded uh, by listening to others thoughts uh, we were also balanced by taking care of ourselves in the group as well as uh, taking care of the others and we were inquired by asking questions to our mentors well done oh uh, nice. dad yes go ahead swastika um, we were communicators, like in communicating with our teachers, asking our questions and like giving our thoughts. And at the same time, we uh, we were using our social skills and research skills, research to research like our case studies or the information and content we needed, and social skills, uh, talking to other members of our group and telling them our ideas, what we can do. All right. Thank you, Swastika. That was good. So uh, another question I have is along the journey, did you have any disagreements? Anybody? So we all talked about having social skills and being communicators. Did you have disagreements? Anybody would like to take that and how you overcame it? Because I've had chats with a couple of students where there were disagreements. Would anybody like to share that? No? Okay. Myra maybe you can. Myra, Myra go ahead. Yeah, mentors, if you can see your students yeah, uh, raising their hands. Go ahead, Myra. Um, I think in our transport group, like I'm taking up one of the disagreements that we had. So Karen and I, we had both made different logos. 
and everybody couldn't decide uh, which one to choose. Half the people wanted hers, half the people wanted mine. So there was a bit of a conflict. So we solved it. Uh, and by like ma'am told us that why do you feel that we should choose uh, this certain person's logo? Like we had to exactly state the reason. We can so everybody it. saw the highlights of the other person's logo. So we Great. chose. Oh, nice, yeah. Yes, but they then at the end, good. it got sorted out. We like just kind of merged both the logos and made both. a. We mixed both, yeah. Yeah, and Great. became like we we sorted it out. Yeah, yeah. especially for the logo thing, that was one of our main problems. Um, to make the presentation and uh, the logo is one of uh, mostly one of the key for the presentation. Great, nice. So the, the idea is it's okay to have disagreements, but what's more important is how we overcome it amicably, right? And that's part of social skills and communication skills. So well done. Remember all the skills that you've learned through this journey and all through your PYP, PYP years, all right? Thank you so much. Uh, Arulsa, you can open enable chat now. Meera, over to you. Well, well, I'm sure we all got a good understanding as to why the interconnectedness of systems is vital to the smooth functioning of communities, of our communities. Thank you members of the Bal Sabha for, interesting, for interestingly taking us through the various presentations. Our parents have played an important part in supporting us all through our PYP years. May I invite our parent, Ms. Siddhi Shah and Ms. Thakkar to share their thoughts with us. Good morning, everyone. First of all, a very, very, very big clap and a very, very great acknowledgement to all the kids here. You guys have been superb. Um, uh, a big thank you to all the teachers. I think uh, the way you all have come together. Uh, I know the kids studied with Miss Charlotte when they were like toddlers and um, all of you till grade five, you all have come together to put such a great, great presentation. Um, I think one thing I want to really share here, um, when you were walking in as parents as, of those toddlers, you know, barely able to walk, we were thinking, you know, how is this IVDP, pro how is the IV program? How is it that all of this is so interconnected? Because the way we have learned, it's always been subjects. It's always been in silos. And today, uh, at the end of the journey of these seven years, when I see them talk words like conflict management, GDP, profit, uh, social skills, oh my God, I think uh, we would not have thought like this until probably we were in our early college years. So amazing, amazing work. Uh, uh, to, to the entire curriculum, the way the whole thing has panned out. Uh, some of the highlights that I think I would like to share here as a parent, as I've seen all the kids, not just Kahan Kavya, but all the kids as they have evolved. I think the five skills that IB really focuses on, uh, you know, which is communication, collaboration, self-management, it's come out so beautifully in all these kids. The way uh, they started making their first presentation, which was, I think, pre-COVID, it was mainly like, you know, they would go on a site, they would copy paste, they would not probably understand. And today, when I see them at grade five, um, making their presentations, there is no copy paste. There is honestly so much of thinking, so much of analysis, so much of summarizing and synthesizing that is going into it. The, the whole thing that they have evolved as readers, they are into so much of reading. They've created book clubs. They are having discussions within those book clubs about various characters, the role models, the cliffhangers, and uh, how beautifully they are connecting who is uh, the right role model. Like I think the whole role model UI that happened last year with them, um, uh, whether it was uh, the use of a Malala or it was, uh, you know, Nelson Mandela, knowing their stories was so motivating for them. So I think they've picked up nuances of so many lives and have been able to relate to their lives and 
to pick that up. I think the other thing that I've seen is as they've evolved, I think they've started managing and respecting each other's time. I know that in grade four and grade three, when they had to do group activities, it was, I think all, all, all of us parents were struggling and doing all the coordination. Come grade five, they have become so responsible, so empathetic, right? On the, uh, okay, mama, she does not have the time. Can I do it at this time? And they've taken responsibility, helped each other, made each other accountable to complete their tasks. That itself is such a huge win for working as a team. Uh, you know, uh, keeping aside differences and coming out and 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 doing, uh, I mean, and just chugging along and making it work. Street plays, role plays, dances, rap songs, just so much of creativity and ways of presenting your thoughts in different ways. It's it's amazing, and and the the poetry. I think the whole the whole thing that they learned about poems. I know so many of you all have picked up writing creatively across so many forms and as a passion it's not just a one-off i think the, the the thing that they've carried along is that they are trying to show that they are lifelong learners in areas which they relate to there is no force to like one over the other uh, it's really beautiful and i think two three other things that stand out from the research and uh, you know, the thinking skills, the other two skills are out of the five skills. Um, I, I relate to this one incident, uh, which I personally saw Kahan interact. We had a, a, a relative come from Kuwait and uh, we were talking about uh, visiting Kuwait and there was uh, this whole discussion about currencies and why different currencies and why the Kuwait dollar is so expensive. And you know, uh, he brought up this whole concept about oil, oil, oil being a rare resource for fuel and we being rich in oil and hence the demand and hence the, uh, the high price and hence the economy being so. Finished. Such a beautiful culmination of so many inquiries that might have gone behind. So, uh, uh, very small things, but this is how I have seen their subtle learning. Uh, the last thing that I want to touch upon here is they're, they're being extremely aware about what is a fact and what is an opinion. They, in fact, sometimes come and correct us also. This is your opinion. This is not a fact. And uh, I think this difference, though it's very, uh, you know, small, subtle, but that understanding will help them so much uh, when they are trying to take any decisions, any, uh, you know, when they're concluding things. Uh, so I think they've become very good with this whole concept of, uh, uh, you know, facts and opinions. They've gone on Amazon when they want to buy things. They are so aware about reading the reviews, not one, many, to understand, uh, you know, whether it's a fake one, whether it's not. Their learnings on social media, what, what is bullying? I think I'm bullying this person. I should not be doing this. I should not believe in this piece of news. I should believe in this piece of news when I'm doing research. Just too, too aware. So um, last but not the least, I think I would like to just end this with one thought. Uh, awareness is the first, uh, you know, is the first step to any evolution. Action is a necessity for the evolution to happen. And I'm so grateful, so grateful to the entire DVIS community for making all our kids really, really uh, starting to be aware and becoming capable to use these two most important things which we take for granted. And I think gratitude, empathy, all of it follows with awareness and with action. So beautifully done, this whole PYPX, the way you all have culminated all the six streams with resource management being the core at everything, beautifully tying in all the dots. It's amazing. If someone would ask me to go back to school, I would love to come back to a school like DBIS and learn the program the way you all are learning. So kids, the least you can be is just be so grateful for whatever you've got from your parents, from your teachers, and from your friends. Yeah? Thank you so much. Over to you all. Uh, over to Disha. Thank you, Siddhi. I think, uh, you know, can't agree more with what you said. Um, so first of all, um, heartiest congratulations 
to all the teachers and students for putting forth such a well thought well coordinated and a very well presented pyp exhibition um it was a delight to watch our children demonstrate high confidence intent and knowledge um like siddhi mentioned i was also highly impressed with the overall format of the exhibition uh, the entire content distribution which included skits dance music and a surprise rap song um uh, you all managed to keep our audience engaged at all times so great show great show put up kids um i'd also like to talk about uh, you know uh, what we observed over the last month so the preparatory group the preparatory group calls that happened discussions and as ms gladys mentioned even the disagreements were a delight to observe from the sidelines um i think as a parent um, it was very exciting to watch how learning was being synthesized from um, ideas and data which was very seemingly divergent uh, so i'd like to say that it's not just the final day presentation today but all the work that has led to this exhibition is a reason for celebration and growth for our children um i'd also like to mention that with regards to the preparation uh, the the palghar field trip gave our children a fantastic exposure uh, to a life which is so drastically different from theirs i think it got them closer to understanding ground realities pertaining to their respective topics i also had the opportunity to interact with a few kids after the field trip uh, you know when we were traveling back home uh, from school and uh, i was impressed with the perspectives that they brought back from the field trip uh, so kudos to the school for organizing this and we would look really look forward to more of these experiences for our children um i would also like to take this opportunity to thank the school and all the teachers for their efforts nurturing and the education through all these years extremely grateful to the school for providing a wonderful environment where our little children can explore their potential and flourish uh, we totally understand the time and effort that goes behind the scenes um so great job i think uh, we really really blessed to be a part of the dbis family um I, let me conclude uh, you know with a quote from uh, apj abdul kalam it kept ringing in my head as i was watching all the presentations today uh, the purpose of education is to make good human beings with skill and expertise and these enlightened human beings can be created by great teachers and we've seen that in action today so thank you very much it was a delight to be a part of this journey i think we 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 walk back extremely enriched with this entire experience thank you very much thank you dear parents for sharing your valuable thoughts we thank you for all you do for us i now invite our dear principal miss meena ma'am to address us good morning children sometimes it's the journey that teaches you a lot about your destination dear children today you showcased all the skills that you learned as a pyp learner in the last 7 years all i want to say is dbis is proud of each and every student of grade 5 you need a pat on your back for what you did today i met you 5 years back when you were in grade 1 little toddlers and the memories i have are all etched in my mind but today i saw something different you taking on the problems of the village school you visited in jawar your own city your school your building and so on and so forth and all i can say is you have come a long way each one of you your practical hands on approach is perhaps one of the best forms of learning and you did it the excursion to palgar again i repeat the interaction with locals the understanding of their problems and providing solutions is a reward of a lifetime children treasure each one of these memories that you created during this pyp exhibition now let's look at the groups i'll start with the drainage group drainage as we just realized is not so simple 
we also learned that not just pouring liquid and expecting it to disappear. There's a science involved and the understanding of which you presented it so beautifully. I loved your message when you spoke about uh, segregating waste and we can start in a small way right from the kitchen at home. The next group was waste management. Waste management is the diamond in a dungle, a positive outcome of an otherwise grim situation. The presentation only showed us that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I loved how you spoke in Marathi to the school children in Jawahar, asking them how they could separate the waste in their village school. Energy for ages has been the driving force of the industrial growth, defining and redefining nation's progress, making a difference in our lives. And today we are better informed through all that you spoke today and the information that you shared with all the children in the school and your parents. Healthcare is and has always been the backbone of civilization. We just saw how important it was in the last two years. A healthy nation is a wealthy nation, which can reroute resources to other needy areas. How we can use our resources for others is also what you spoke about. Money saved is money earned. You, your dance and song as a note to COVID warriors was excellent. So you can take all the children. I think that we have shared already all, all on all our sites and social media platforms. Your agriculture team, the last one is perhaps one of the most dynamic areas where future is intricately linked to the vagaries of nature. Technology brought in the green revolution and balanced consumption is what will sustain us is the message you gave to all. We liked your action plan to support Save the Soil initiative, which is, was uh, proposed by Isha Foundation. Thank you so much for that, children. Transport, whether in English or in Hindi or in Marathi, the skid, the skid said it all. It was safety, safety, safety. I love the fact that, children, you realize the traffic problem of the school, which we have these days, because we do not have school buses which are plying at the moment. Yes. We have created carpools, but that also creates a lot of traffic jam in the street outside the school. And you are the best ambassadors for that. All you need to tell your parents is, yes, can we get back to the school bus so that the number of vehicles coming to the school are lesser and traffic is more manageable. It has been a learning experience to us, teachers and management at DBIS. Your focused approach without compromising on quality of content. The artist in you rising up to the occasion and your creative language skills, the number of learning tools that you used was simply amazing. I do not have words to speak about what you did today. All I did was I messaged father and I told him, father, you missed something really, which you should not have missed because this is one of your favorite group of students. The transdisciplinary theme you selected, how we organize ourselves was very well selected, showing us a path forward from our present predicaments. For every problem, there is a solution and you shared it with all of us. This year has been different from a pandemic low to a post COVID freedom high and your wonderful family saw you through it all. I thank you and your parents for this wonderful exhibition. Dear parents, you have been the true facilitators of your child's PYP journey. Thank you for that. Really happy to hear Ms. Siddhi and Ms. Disha talk about your journey with your children in their PYP years. I thought you could be brand ambassadors for the PYP curriculum in the country. Dear teachers, the hybrid sessions have been stressful, but you took it in your stride. A big hug and thank you to each of the teachers and you have been the mentors to these six groups. Your guidance as facilitators was seen in each of the groups. Thank you, Ms. Roana and Ms. Shraddha. The fruits of your perseverance were showcased in an extraordinary event. The same breath, I thank the IT team and the art department for their technical support 
and guidance to all the six groups. I also want to thank Vaibhav Sir and Yashaswini for having the introduction to each group in such a creative manner. I thought this was the highlight of the exhibition. Dear Gladys, you have stood tall, firm in commitment, articulating your thoughts into action, the quality being incidental. Thank you for everything, for all that you do for the PYP learners, for the teachers, taking care that every little message, every little article, every little video is checked by you before we put it on at the exhibition or in the lessons in class. Thank you for doing all this in spite of the fact that your daughter would be appearing for a DP examinations from today onwards. Thank you, Gladys. Mira, I love the way you took us through the program as a compare and so did all the children. Each one of you were brilliant in what you did today. So dear children, fill your life with experiences, not things. Have stories to tell, not stuff to show. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your kind and encouraging words. With this, we come to the end of the PYP Exhibition 2022. Have a good day, take care, and stay safe.